my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and in today's video we are doing a cook with me. It has been a hot minute uh, but it is 5.50 on a Monday night. I am literally about to cook dinner for my family and figured why not just pop on the camera. It's quiet in the house. Four out of five of the kids are not here so let's just pop on the camera and I'm going to walk you through cooking dinner for my family. So tonight we are going to be making a family favorite here in my house. It's a new recipe to us. We have been cooking this now since I want to say like December or January. I think it was January. Um, and it is called Indian butter chicken and I have the recipe printed here. I print my Pinterest recipes when we find ones that we love because then I put them in this really old binder that is covered in like stains. I should probably get another one, but I literally have like all these recipes just printed in here, like and things I found in magazines. And um, so I print them when I can. I've mentioned this in a recent video. If you're not following me on Pinterest, make sure that you are Charlotte Grove Farmhouse. I have so many things pinned on there, so many recipes, and I have to tell you, I have probably made 80% of the recipes that you'll find on my Pinterest because I love to cook, I love to be adventurous, I love to try new things. Um, so we are making Indian butter chicken. This recipe comes from the Stay at Home Chef. Uh, the author is Rachel Farnsworth. I will link it for you in the description box down below. It is a five-star recipe, like hands down five out of five and it's better the next day. I do not follow the recipe verbatim. I do make my own minor adjustments, so I'll explain those to you as we go. But the recipe says that it should take about 10 times to cook, or 10 minutes to cook, about 15 minutes to marinate, and about five minutes to prep. Um, so about 30 minutes total. I would hands down agree that this is a very fast recipe. The five minute prep time I would disagree with because you're gonna have to cut your chicken into bite-sized pieces. And for me, that takes a little while. Um, for you, like I cube the pieces, so for you it may take a little bit faster, you might have a faster way of doing it, but for me, that probably takes me about five minutes to do alone, and then you gotta mix all your ingredients. So I would say give yourself 30 to 40 minutes for this recipe, and it is, it gets better every single day. So make extra, have leftovers. I for sure will have this for lunch tomorrow. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So here's a quick rundown of the ingredients that you're going to need. This is a very easy and affordable recipe. So you're going to need one uh, eight ounce can of tomato sauce. I think you need a cup of heavy cream. Um, the recipe calls for, I think, a cup, let me just grab the recipe, how about that? Calls for a half a cup of plain Greek yogurt, and I don't have that, so I use sour cream, which it does say that you can substitute sour cream for the yogurt. Uh, calls for two tablespoons of lemon juice. Instead of buying lemons all the time, I just have this in my fridge, but you could do fresh lemons. And this is the star of the show. So this is an Indian spice called garam masala. I might be saying that wrong. Garam masala, I don't know. I don't even wanna try to butcher that, but and I'm sorry if I offended anybody, but this is the star of the show. It is delicious. I bought this on Amazon and um, I've made this recipe a ton and shared some of the spice with uh, somebody else and I've barely like tapped into it. So I'll link it for you down below, but this is the star of the show. You're also gonna need ground ginger, cumin and paprika and then some minced garlic and some salt. I use kosher salt um, in my pinch pot. So those are the ingredients that you will need. It also calls for um, one whole jalapeno minced up. I leave the jalapeno out because my family can't hang. And then we who like a little spice will add chili powder or you can add cayenne pepper or you can add franks. All of that will add some hot sauce or some jarred jalapeno or just regular jalapeno in yours. It also calls for fresh cilantro for the top, and that is a huge game changer. Do not skip that part. 
The other thing I just want to mention is the difference in gingers. This is ginger paste. You do not want ginger paste. You want ground ginger. So make sure that you're getting the powdered ginger for your recipe because that's what you're going to be using. So you're going to go ahead and start by cubing your chicken. So however you want to do that, you're just going to cube it up into about one inch little cubes. So about like this or so, that will give you roughly about the same size pieces. So that way they all cook um, at the same rate. That's gonna be the important part. So just go ahead and cut up your chicken. It can just be rough. It doesn't have to be perfect and they don't have to be, you know, exactly the same and then put those into a mixing bowl that you can add your other ingredients to because we're going to marinate this. Once you have your chicken cubed and in the bowl, we're gonna go ahead and add our marinade ingredients right into the bowl, and we're gonna let this sit for about 15 minutes. So the recipe calls for two pounds of chicken. I think that's roughly two pounds. It also calls for a third of a cup, no, a half of a cup of uh, yogurt, which I don't have, so we're doing, uh, what is this? This is um, sour cream, plain sour cream. And then you're gonna add in two tablespoons of lemon juice. Like I said, you can use a uh, fresh lemon. I just use this lemon juice that I keep in my refrigerator so that I have it at all times. You're gonna need two teaspoons of cumin. How do you guys say it? Do you say cumin, cumin? I always like to pop the lid off and just make it easier, but uh-oh, it appears that I am almost out. So we're just gonna put whatever's left and we're gonna call that quits for the entire recipe because I am out. So put a little extra in there probably, but that's okay. Next up, you're gonna need one teaspoon of the garam masala. And that smells like sweet and smoky. You've got the smoky from the cumin. You need a teaspoon of salt. And you need a teaspoon of ginger. Now you don't necessarily have to, you know, you could just eyeball this. You don't have to measure it all out if you don't want to, but if it's your first time making it and you're afraid of messing it up, definitely just spoon it out. So go ahead and mix that up. Once all of your chicken is covered in your sour cream and your seasonings, we're going to put this to the side and let this marinate for about 15 minutes. And while that's marinating, we're going to go ahead and start soaking our rice. So I have talked at length on my channel about the rice that I love and am kind of uh, a rice snob, if you will. I will only use a very specific type of white rice. I just like it the best. And um, I, it's been a while since I've talked about it on my channel, so I'll bring it up again. But this makes the best hands down rice pudding ever, ever, ever. But that is the Cal Rose rice. And this is the Batan rice, I think. And you can find this at Walmart. That's where I buy mine, but you can also find it on Amazon. And check your local grocery stores. When I lived in Las Vegas, we could get it at the grocery store, but um, Walmart is where I have found it here um, living in New England. So this stuff is the absolute best. It's kind of pricey. This bag is roughly around $9, um, give or take, but uh, it is the best. It even says on it, U.S. number one extra fancy. And let me tell you, it really is extra fancy. The key, however, is that you're going to want to let your rice uh, sit for a while. And you're also going to want to rinse it. So pour your rice, rinse it out, pour your rice, uh, put the rice in, pour water over, 
rinse it and until it's clear and then you're going to let it sit for about 20 minutes, um, 20 minutes or so. Now, if you don't rinse your rice, you're fine. It's not gonna change anything. Uh, maybe the taste people say, but I gotta tell you, I've done it both ways and I haven't really noticed a difference. So you can rinse your rice if you want to. For today's sake, for the sake of time, my boys will be home in about 20 minutes. So for the sake of time, I am just going to soak my rice and I'm not going to worry about rinsing it because I just don't want to worry about it. My sink is full of dishes. The kids need to do those. I have dishes. I have groceries that need to be put away. This is just real life on a Monday night, but I'm just gonna soak it for 20 minutes to give it a little bit of that stickiness and to make it plump up. You can cook your rice in a rice cooker. Just follow the directions on your um, rice cooker and what, what you need to do with that. You can cook it in an instant pot. I love to cook my rice on the stove just the good old fashioned way. So I'm gonna let it soak for 20 minutes, around 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then I'm going to pop it on high, let the water come up to a boil. Then I'm going to drop it down to a simmer. I will stir it at this point, make sure that nothing is like sticky to the bottom and then put the top back on let that cook for a little while until most of your liquid is gone and then turn it off let it sit for a few minutes and it will have absorbed all of that liquid it'll be nice and plump and absolutely delicious this is how I make my rice every single time and it comes out every time so let's get this on the stove Okay, so for me, I did three cups of uncooked rice to four and a half cups of water, and we're gonna let that soak um, just here on the stove. You can, like I said, make your rice according to your cooking measure, your cooking uh, method, and then we're gonna come back to this in just about 10, 15 minutes. I said 20, but we're in a hurry tonight. <laughs> While we're marinating our chicken and letting our rice sit, we're gonna go ahead and cut, uh, dice up one medium onion. I did forget to mention that you're going to need onion and you're also going to need, I think, six tablespoons of butter. So, um, hence the name butter chicken. You probably were like, where's the butter, Tiffany? Considering the title, the name. And I didn't mention that in the initial ingredients. Okay, so we've got our rice there. It's been soaking. Uh, three cups of, I did three cups of rice to four and a half cups of water, but do whatever works for your uh, cooking method. I also grabbed my frying pan. We are going to put a tiny bit of avocado oil in here, and then we're gonna cook all of our chicken, and then we're gonna take the chicken out and we'll make the sauce. You do them separately, but um, it makes sense. So we're gonna start off with cooking our chicken. So 
I went ahead and put my chicken on with the heat up to about medium high in between the medium and the high you heard it with a little bit of a sizzle i like for my chicken to really cook up um so i just put the lid on and i'm not going to touch it for a couple of minutes and let that get nice and browned it is going to create kind of a sauce in there uh, while it's cooking from just all of the juices so just let that cook and um in a couple of minutes here we're going to pop in there and we'll stir it up um, and we're also going to turn on our rice. Now, like I said, I'm going, um, I'm going to let it come to a boil and then uh, stir it up, drop it down to a simmer, and let that simmer until all of the liquid, or most of the liquid, I would say like 90% of the liquid is absorbed, and then turn it off entirely and let it absorb some more. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And I think I might just clean up a little bit as this is going. Um, and it'll be time to make our sauce. My mouth is already drooling. I'm so excited to eat. It just turned the rice off because it was pretty much all the water was gone. So I'm just gonna stir this, make sure nothing's like sticking to the bottom. And then we're just gonna let this sit. No heat on. So we've got six tablespoons of butter and we're gonna saute that onion. You could use less onion if onion isn't your favorite, but I love onion and I think it gives the recipe just a really good depth of flavor. So just let that caramelize a little bit. We'll go ahead and prep our other ingredients. For this recipe, you're gonna need one cup or eight ounces of tomato sauce. We're not gonna use it yet. We're just gonna open it, put it to the side. And we're also going to need eight ounces or one cup of heavy cream. Put that to the side. So now that we have our garlic in there and our onion sauteed, we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the seasonings so that we can cook those up. So I think it's one teaspoon of the Garmin Masala, Garam Masala, sorry. Garmin. You're gonna need two teaspoons of paprika and also one teaspoon of cumin, but remember we ran out. Go ahead and stir that up. You're gonna just kind of cook your spices a little bit. It's gonna smell really good in here. This is that time I wish you guys had 
smell-o-vision and could smell how incredible it smells. So many rich, deep flavors. Go ahead and add in your tomato sauce. And we're gonna let that combine. And then we're going to mix in our heavy cream. Last step is gonna be just to salt it a little bit. Don't do too much, you can always go back and add more. And then we're going to turn up the heat and add our chicken back. Now that everything is in here, we're just gonna go ahead and let this come to a simmer and the sauce will thicken up just a little bit and then it's gonna be time to eat. You want it like this, a little extra sauce to go over your rice. As you let it sit and simmer, this is what it's gonna to come to look like. Just super absolutely delicious, super saucy chicken. It smells incredible in here. I'm gonna go ahead and serve some up and we're gonna taste this together. Okay, <clears throat> my bowl is served. This looks phenomenal. I love fresh cilantro. I could eat it on pretty much anything. And that fresh cilantro next to the smoky chicken is just amazing. Look at all that steam. Can you guys see that? But wow, just looks incredible. And I cannot wait to take a giant bite. So let's go ahead and Dive in. I know my family is dying. They're all home, so. So hot. Mm. It's so creamy and delicious. If you are a curry fan, or if you don't know if you're a curry fan, this is the way to start. It's a super gentle, Sweet, smoky, delicious, salty, easy, easy curry that tastes absolutely divine and it'll turn anybody into a curry lover, I promise. Mm. All right, my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this cook with me video today. I will have the recipe linked for the Indian butter chicken for you down below. Do not snooze on this recipe, you guys, I promise. Even if you are not a curry fan, you will love this. I don't love all curries, but I definitely love this curry and another Thai curry, which I think I'll make in a future recipe, but their future video, but definitely give this a shot. So I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me on this super regular Monday night. If I turn this camera around right now, you would absolutely die if you saw what the house looks like, but that's all right. We're going to sit down and eat like a family. We can clean it up afterward. There's always time to pick up the mess. So thank you guys so much for joining me in today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Let me know if you want to see more cook with me videos. I've kind of fallen off the bandwagon with these, but uh, if it's something you're interested in, I'm definitely, you know, open to talking more about it and possibly filming more of these. So let me know how you feel about that. And until the next one, my friends, happy eating. Bye.